Welcome back to Taylor Time. I'm your host, Taylor Poucher, and today we are going to make a cake that looks like a taco. So last week we made a cake that looked like a pizza, and this week we're gonna do the exact same thing, but make it look just like a taco. So to start, I have here a lovely chocolate cake, baked and cooled. You can use whatever cake you want, but since we have meat in a taco, I decided to make it a chocolate cake to kind of resemble that. So, I like to take my cakes out the pan by using what's called a straight spatula. They come in many different sizes. I'm just gonna use a big one today because this is a big cake. I like to pry it from the edges a little bit. And now, what I like to do is take my Lazy Susan. Mine comes apart, so if yours doesn't, you can just flip it over onto a plate or a cake board. I'm gonna flip it right over and place it back in the base. And voila, here we have our cake and nothing really stuck to the pan. There's a few come, a few come, a few crumbs but that's completely normal. So here we have our beautiful chocolate cake, and now we can take this and flip it right side up. There we go. Ooh, so a lot of crumbs everywhere. If you like to bake, you know that baking can be messy, and so if you've never baked before, I will warn you, it will make a really, really big mess, so. Be careful and be prepared to clean up. So I'm gonna level this cake by taking a serrated knife. This knife is used for bread, for cakes, or anything kind of near that consistency. So I'm gonna level my cakes. I usually level it right where the caramelization ends at the top, but I don't wanna make this taco cake too big so I'm gonna level off just a little bit more because mine rose to be pretty tall. Okay, so I've leveled my cake and I've cleaned up my mess just to get all the crumbs out the way. It makes it a lot easier to work. So here we have our cake and we want to make sure we save our cake because we're gonna use this as the meat on our taco a little bit later. So don't throw this away and don't snack on it either which usually happens a lot in my house, but don't snack on it and don't throw it away because we're gonna use this a little bit later. Okay, so now I'm gonna end up cutting my cake right in half, so that way we can stack it on top of each other and make our, our main <laughs> taco shape. So I'm just gonna take a ruler and find the center of my cake. I'm gonna make sure my ruler lines up perfectly and I'm gonna very, very carefully with my knife, slowly cut into the center of my cake. And here we are, we have two slices of cake cut straight down the middle and we're gonna end up stacking these with some buttercream. But first, this right here, it's called simple syrup, and if you haven't heard of it before, it's half sugar and half water. It's boiled and cooled completely, and this is what you use to keep your cakes very, very moist, especially during cakes that, de that require a lot of decorating, and it keeps them from getting dry over time because cakes can sometimes sit out at events or when you're decorating or being put in the fridge a lot, and putting it in the fridge can really dry out. So, I can take my paintbrush and dab our simple syrup right on top. All right, so our surface is clean. It makes it that much easier to work. And now I have some chocolate buttercream. This is the buttercream I was talking about. It's gonna be in the center. It's gonna help us decorate our entire cake and it's gonna make this chocolate cake 10 times better. So, I'm gonna take some of this chocolate buttercream and I'm gonna put a good bit in the center. 
going to take my offset spatula which if you don't have one of these you really really need to get one they're super handy and it makes cake decorating so so easy and now we can take our other half of our chocolate cake be very careful because it can break it's very very fragile and place it right on top So now we can give this lovely taco cake a good crumb coat. A crumb coat helps keep your crumbs locked into your cake so that way your final layer of icing isn't super crummy and it's nice and smooth and all you can see is the buttercream and no chocolate crumbs. Also one thing about icing and crumb coating is that it doesn't have to be super, super clean around the edges because I'm gonna show you a trick that I like to use whenever I decorate cakes for orders that gets the edges super duper sharp and doesn't make you have to waste so much time trying to get the edges super perfect because that can take a lot of time and it can be a little bit frustrating. So now you can pop this in the fridge and then give it your other icing. A good bit of icing will help keep the crumbs, the crumb coat in and just to help give the cake some more icing. So put this in the fridge for maybe another 45 minutes and it should be good to ice your next layer. So here we have our taco shells and I probably have some explaining to do on how I did this because this looks kind of confusing. Like how did, I wouldn't even know how I made this but I'm gonna tell you right now how I made it. This is made of something called gum paste, and gum paste is just like fondant, like I explained in my last episode, the pizza episode, except when it dries, it gets like rock hard. So that's exactly what we want for our shell, so that way it's super durable for our cake. And this is actually a 10 inch cake that we cut in half, and I made this taco shell a 12 inch taco shell, and I rolled it out and I cut it out. And as you can see, it has some texture on there. So to make it look like a taco, I just simply rolled up a small piece of aluminum foil and pressed it all around the, all around the taco shell. I can't even get my words out today, but I pressed it all around the taco shell. And then I used what's called a fondant tool and I made little holes to make it kind of look like it was bubbling, uh, bubbling just a little bit in the oven. And so I cut it in half and now we can use it for our cake. And now we can take a half of our taco shell and place it right on top. Being very, very, very careful not to break it. Cause these can be pretty fragile. We give it a good press, not too hard. And the reason why I made a 12 inch taco shell for our 10 inch cake is because we wanted to have that little edge around the cake so that way we can put all of our toppings inside. All right, so we gotta be very, very, very careful for this part as well because it could break at any second. So I'm gonna position it in the perfect place. Make sure it has the same amount of space on each side and now I can just press it up against the cake and boom. There we go. Here's our taco cake. I'm gonna press the sides really, really well to make sure our taco shells are sticking. All right, so my cake is in the fridge and now we can prepare our toppings. So I'm going to first prepare my guacamole. So not many people put guacamole on their tacos, but it's very, very good. So I'm gonna put guacamole on my taco. So here I have some green buttercream. It's just plain vanilla green buttercream and here, I have some little candy pieces. These are actually little licorice strips, 
green and red and I cut these up and these are gonna look kind of like vegetables in our guacamole. And now I have some little jelly beans and these are gonna look like little beans in our guacamole. Little pieces of olive. And we can give this a good stir. Ooh, my bowl is kind of full here. I'm still gonna mix it up as best as I can. Oops. Be sure to save some beans or olives for your taco meat because we're going to need some of those for that as well. So only put about maybe half into your guacamole. And now you can see all the beans and the vegetables and it looks just like guacamole. I'm so happy. So next we have a very, very important ingredient, which I've mentioned multiple times so far. We have our meat that we're gonna be making. So this is some chocolate cake. And remember earlier I said that you should save your chocolate cake hump because we're really gonna need that for our meat. That's what's gonna make our meat look delicious. I'm not gonna mash it up too, too much the way I would for cake pops. I'm going to make sure there's still some kind of cake, I guess, crumbs in there. Or not crumbs. These are all crumbs. But kind of cake lumps in here. So it looks like our meat isn't perfect. We don't want perfect meat. We want it to look like it was cooked on the stove and prepared homemade. Now we can actually make this look 10 times more realistic. And we can use some raisins. If you really, really, really don't like raisins, you don't have to use them, which raisins aren't my favorite, but I used to love them as a kid, even though I'm still a kid. <laughs> but I'm gonna mix these in. And now I'm going to mix in my jelly beans. But I'm still gonna save some to put on there as well. Okay, so. <laughs> For our next topping, we have our lettuce. And this isn't real lettuce in case you were fooled, which I was. This is actually coconut shreds. And I put these, what, okay, so I'm gonna show you how I did these. So I put my coconut pieces in green and just a touch of yellow food coloring. And I put water in there as well, just to help distribute the color. And then what I did is I tossed it up, mixed it up super well, and then I put it in an oven at 350 degrees, and I toasted my coconut pieces for about five to seven minutes until they were nice and lettuce and crispy. You know you're done toasting your coconut pieces when they're dry to the touch, but be careful not to burn yourself trying to test the coconut pieces. But once they're dyed, cooled and baked you have your lettuce pieces so now i'm going to show you how to make my tomato so here i have what's called piping gel and piping gel is what bakers use to make things kind of stick together and to make cakes shine as well so piping gel is just a clear gel that's mixed of completely sugar and water and it's made just to make things 10 times better. <laughs> so here I have some chopped up red gummies. I almost forgot the name, but these are red little, little gummies I used. And these were actually coated in sugar before I chopped them up. So if you can't find any gummies that aren't coated in sugar, what I did is I soaked it in some hot water for maybe about five or 10 minutes just to get all the sugar off and I cut them up and I'm gonna add them straight into my piping gel. And I'm also going to use just a touch of red food coloring. And 
And so the reason why I want to use piping gel with my little tomato pieces is so that way they look nice and juicy like a ripe tomato. And now our tomatoes are done. And now we can move on to the next topping. So for the next two toppings we have, we have some olives, which are just licorice pieces that I cut into little strips or to little pieces, little circles. And I use a piping tip to make a circle in the center and make it look just like an olive. And if you watched the last episode, my pizza episode, I showed you exactly how to make those. And this right here is my sour cream. This is just typical icing. Um, it's super easy to make. It's just heavy cream, a little bit of vanilla, and some powdered sugar. This isn't how I make my normal buttercream for cakes that I use for decorating or selling to customers, but this is the perfect mixture for your sour cream. Here I have my taco cake. I'm gonna place down very gently. There we go. And we're gonna do a little bit of extra, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna do a few more steps to this shell just to make it look like this is a cooked crisp taco shell and doesn't look like it hasn't been baked. So to paint my taco cake and make it look extra cooked, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow food coloring and just a touch, 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 touch of brown food coloring with some lime extract. You can use vanilla extract or lemon extract, but I'm using lime because I find that it dries very, very quickly. So now I can take a paintbrush that I use only for doing cakes. That's very important. And I'm gonna paint my taco cake and make like it, and make, <laughs> and make it look like it's been nice and cooked because we don't want a raw taco cake. We want it to look nice and golden brown. And now our taco cake is nice and painted. And so to make this look a little bit more realistic, I'm gonna use some coffee grounds. And take just a little bit. And kind of pat it all around the sides of the cake. This is kind of I hate to say this, but tacos sometimes look like a little bit like dirty, like they have like some sort of like texture on them. And so I kind of want to mimic that with the coffee grounds. I'm just going to dab a little bit on there, just very little. Kind of spreading it around. Here we have our finished taco shell. It looks nice and baked. It looks super kind of rough and natural like a regular homemade taco. Looks great. We're gonna do one last step and this is gonna really amp up our taco. Oh my Lord. <laughs> that scared me. Okay, so our plan backfired. So I was gonna use a torch on this cake, but as you see, it basically just exploded with fire. So I think I'm gonna leave my taco shell the way it is because that was scary. So now I'm gonna take my taco meat and use my tongs and hands. Hands are a very handy tool. And I'm going to just pile this on top and make it look kind of like taco meat. This will get pretty messy, so be careful about that. Whoops. If you can't already tell, when it comes to baking, I'm a pretty big of a perfectionist. It has to be a certain way. Okay, so now we have our lettuce on our taco, and we can now take our cheese. Whoops. So now we have our cheese for our taco, and it's still kind of soft, but that's okay because it looks melty. 
But this is modeling chocolate. Modeling chocolate is just basically, it's just corn syrup and chocolate and it's used to decorate a lot of cakes, used to make figurines, in our case used to make some cheese. And I let this cool and I dyed it a nice cheesy orange and I put it in a shredder or I used a cheese grater, a real cheese grater, and I grated it up and I put it in the freezer just to keep it nice and chill because again, chocolate melts and so does cheese, which is why this is the perfect substitute. I'm gonna lay my cheese right on top. So I'm gonna grab a fork and I'm gonna grab my tomatoes and put those right on top. Ooh, tomatoes look super juicy. Just gonna adjust these the way I want them to be. Yeah. All right, so now we can add one of our last ingredients. We can add our guacamole. By a little bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> Make a little pool, a little place, a little bed for our sour cream to rest. Okay, so we can add our second to last ingredient, our sour cream. I'm gonna give this one last good mix. And now for our last but not least ingredient on this taco. We have so many different things on here, but this is the last ingredient. I'm gonna take our olives and place them right on top. This is the grand finale. It's looking so good. Ooh, I'm so happy with this cake. Last one, All right? <laughs> we have our crispy taco shell. We have our meat, our lettuce, our cheese, our juicy tomatoes, our homemade guacamole. We have our sour cream and to top it off, we have our olives. This is so good. This might, might might, might, might top the pizza cake. Maybe, maybe just a little bit. Maybe they're just like right here together. But this looks so good. I love it so much. So this wouldn't be a Taylor Time episode without trying our taco cake. And it's almost so pretty, I don't wanna eat it. But I'm gonna try it anyways. So I'm gonna get a little bit of each layer. I'm gonna try just a little bit of each. Ooh. And our guacamole, tomatoes, cheese, love cheese. Our lettuce, coconut lettuce. Oops, sticking to my fingers. And then we have a little bit of our meat. Ooh, oh gosh. <laughs> All right, let's try this. The chocolate is very, very good. It's very moist because of the icing we added. <laughs> but thank you so much for tuning in to another Taylor Time episode. I hope you enjoyed this taco cake and I'll see you later. Bye.